This thing is really begging for so much more downforce, but it just can't create it because the game currently is not so great due to these little doodads. Well, I thought that was a good assessment to make, right? Right? Oh, God, I've got to do another deep dive into how aerodynamics work again now, don't I? Ugh. Don't worry, fifth time's a charm. Now, this is the car we're going to be using. I kind of slapdash put it together. I kind of like the look of it. I wanted to give it a rear, like, Venturi tunnel sort of design. And I just, I don't know. I kind of like it, but also I kind of don't. You can have your own opinions, but if they're bad, I'll cry. You wouldn't do that to me now, would you? <laughs> yeah, anyway, let's get back to this. Hidden away here, we have three wings. And these three wings are set to a very mild angle of 50 each. The error balance is balanced basically entirely upon the positioning of the wings and this front lip, which does give downforce. And we're generating about 1600 kilos on the rear and about 600 kilos on the front. So we're gonna hide these and then we're gonna call this 50%, okay? There's no percent sign. The more you know. Fine, whatever. We're just going to export this one to see how it goes. And then for balance, we're going to do one at 10%. Bring these down. Change that. Re-export. And do a 90%. And export this one. So far, we've not had the downforce warning. Is it going to give it to us now? No. It's not. We're meant to be generating quite a lot of downfalls. So I'm surprised there's no error. Well, it seems nearly 3,000 horsepower is not going to be particularly quiet. But let me show you the collision meshes of all of these and show you where downforce really comes from now in case you didn't really know. If we go into our wheel suspension area, you can see this blue and yellow pane here. That is how downforce is calculated. And you can see that this one is at a mild angle. This is the 10%. Then the 50% is about the same. And the 90% is about the same. But if we go into our tuning and we change, say, our rear wing angle here on this car, you'll see that that changes this angle. So I suppose, let's see if we reset this. What the cars do? I just realized I didn't max out the speed for this. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. So it reckons a 10% downforce, which is the one we've got set here, it should do 560 to 570 kilometers an hour. Let's just quickly update that. Let's test our top speed first. Seems this thing has just a smidgen bit of power. Oh no, we've got turbo overheating problems. That's not going to help us. Well, it looks like it's about shy by one kilometer an hour, but that is pretty exceptional in terms of accuracy. But we're also not generating a lot of downforce right now. So let's do some maths. I know that all of these cars should be able to reach about 400 kilometers an hour. So let's do some maths then. 10% at 400 kilometers per hour has a total weight pushing down of 1800 kilos. And back at base, it only weighs about 1300 kilos, which equates to about 483 kilograms of downforce. And at 400 kilometers an hour in here, that's about 600 kilograms of downforce. Downforce. So we're out by about 120 kilograms, which is not too bad. 50 degree angle, this should be creating about 11 to 1200 kilos. And if we do the math quickly, it's weighing about 2300 kilos. And we're weighing exactly the same amount, we're creating about a ton. So we're not actually that far off. Now let's see what our top speed is. It seems to be fairly stable at about 547 kilometers an hour, which is not far removed from what automation reckons. So this is still pretty accurate. Let's go 90%. And it reckoning that we should get about 2,100 kilograms. Let's do the math. It's weighing about 3,041 kilograms. Take away the default weight and it's generating about 1,700 kilograms. What about our top speed? Well, it seems we've topped out at an even, oh no, 501 kilometers an hour, maybe. Yeah, y uh, yes, no, no, yes, no, maybe. And being able to reach about 490 kilometers an hour, not too shabby, still not broken, but 
why not try to break things now and find the limits? So we've called this one the lots 10. And you wonder why that is? Because we're putting lots of wings in place just for that extra bit of extra downforce. Don't blame me, Ekai Min said that he had about a hundred and something wings. So we're gonna try the same. I see no issue here. Currently that's putting us at about 5,700-ish tons. Oh. Sorry, I, I meant kilograms. That would be a lot of tons. But that's not enough for little old me. No, we need more wings. From henceforth, when referring about this car, you shall know, know it as the slab of wings car. But how does it perform, you say? Well, automation doesn't like it so far. And it doesn't look like we can reach 400 kilometers an hour now. But that is over 10 tons of downforce at 10% wing angle. We're going to have to see if this works. But first, then this thing is a complete eyesore, we're going to make these wings invisible. And now, time to export it. Oh no! I mean, we had to expect it at some point. Now, for the lots of wings variation, since we can't reach 400 kilometers an hour anymore, we're going to do the reading at 200 kilometers an hour. And then this should have a top speed of about 382 kilometers an hour, which is still not too shabby. But let's also give ourselves now the 50%. And that's a lot more downforce. It seems that our top speed is potentially a bit hampered. I don't even know how this works. It reckons it's only gonna go 61 kilometers an hour? That's ridiculous. I think I might just be broken because over here it still says it'll reach about 200 and almost 60. Still, we're gonna export it anyway and give it a try. I suppose that's to be expected. And finally, 90%. God, this thing barely goes over 200. But there's, oh, that's over 11,000 kilograms. All right, let's ride it down. Wait. Huh? No, seriously, how is this one going 207 kilometers now, but the other one only wanted to do... What? The other one wanted to do 61 kilometers an hour. I think automation is having a stroke. I wonder what Test Track reckons this will do. Oh God, no! Oh, I've never seen this one before. I don't even understand this gobbledygook. None! <laughs> automation is healthy. We'll export it anyway. Well, we're done with the old, and now we're gonna try the new! And 10%, very stable off the line. Oh, still feels very brutal. At about 200 kilometers an hour, if we can reach it, there we go. It weighs about 3781, which comes to about, considering it weighs the same weight, 2,450 kilograms, which is about 25% extra downforce. Now we're gonna look at 50%, I'm guessing this is going to start getting jank. All right, 61 or whatever it was kilometers an hour, way over that already, immediately. Okay, it was wrong. So 200 kilometers an hour, our vehicle's weight comes in at 4.3 tons, basically, which comes out to basically three tons, which is considerably less than half. So we're starting to get some results, which we know well this game does. But here's the annoying thing is we had the perfect weight balance in automation, but here in BMNG, it's going to lose it differently from the front and the rear. So that poses a bit of an issue because we're going to lose our weight aero balance. And since our speed rating is kind of broken, we're gonna put it probably an estimation somewhere between 200 and 380 kilometers an hour. So far, not so bad, but it looks like we're topping out at about 313, which all things considered, that's not the worst number in the world. But now we're gonna find out 90%. I expect big things. Our weight comes in at, oh, this isn't looking good already. Oh no, it's two kilograms more than 50%. So so it's kind of busted. But has it lost it from the front or the rear? I suppose let's give it a try on the 330 kilometers an hour. It looks like we're topping out at a similar sort of speed as well. So no big surprise there. Let's go in and have a look at the wing angle that we got hidden inside of here as well. You know, that's about the same sort of angle. Not a whole lot's changed. One thing I do want to try out is see if we've lost any aero balance because of this. Oh, yep. All right, that thing. Oh, my God, that 
Okay, that was not meant to happen. Oh dear. Let's compare that to the original 10% car. So this one's going around, gets up to its highest speeds, and we have a little bit of oversteer, but it is a lot more manageable, especially at the same sort of speeds. You know what? No, this is still quite oversteery. Not the most accurate. Let's see what it does at top speed. If we can get it there and drive in a straight line, please. Oh dear. Oh, this is hard to keep in a straight line. Okay, we're over 500 kilometers an hour and it is a little bit twitchy, but controllable. Oh no, 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 no. Let's try the normal 90% car. This one is, you know, not too bad. It's a little bit oversteery, but manageable. Let's try the 10% car the, uh, with lots of wings on. And oh, yeah, it's very twitchy, very, very twitchy. 50%? Oh, yep, immediately weird things are happening. Let's try to be smooth with Oh, God, no, no, there is no being smooth with this. Oh, my God, I'm going to die. Oh! Yeah, thanks for stopping the car. How safe of you. So it seems that uh, you are going to lose aero balance, and that's something you're going to have to tune in yourself. I mean, not the hardest thing. Because currently, we do have this whole tuning system. But how does it work? Let's go ahead and just add full maximum to everything, which is up to 150%, and see how our downforce amounts change. We've lost nearly 100 kilometers an hour. Oh, no. What? What about a 200 kilometers an hour a reading of downforce? We've increased about 700 kilograms of downforce, but lost 100-ish kilometers an hour almost when we reach our top speed. Is it worth it? In my professional opinion, no. No, not at all. So I instead would actually consider the more appropriate action would be to remove front error. So let's take about 30% off the front. And our top speed is much higher now. We've gained about 40-ish kilometers an hour. Not so bad. But what about 200 kilometer an hour downforce rating? Hmm. It has removed us an appropriate amount of downforce, which is somewhere around 500 kilograms. Not bad. How does the car handle, though? Mmm, that was almost controllable. Oh, don't do that. Let's try that again, shall we? It is, if you're not going overboard, a lot more controllable. Look at that. I can bring it back. Kind of. Oh, dog, not again. Well, I think the conclusion is that yes, you can add more downforce, but no, you probably shouldn't take automation's word for it. The takeaway from this on what you can do to improve your build and what I'm going to be doing in the future, lots of low angle wings. Like a lot, a lot of low angle wings. So this has been an incredibly short video, but hopefully very informative. So I'll catch you next time. Mm, goodbye. Hmm. Should I hot lap this car? Nah, nobody wants to see that.